Welcome to Learn Why Crash series. In this video, we are going to see how you can capture the garbage collection log for your Java applications. Before we see about garbage collection logging mechanism, first let us understand the garbage collection process. So garbage collection is a process of finding and throwing the objects which are no longer in use. But in Java, the garbage collection process is actually doing the exact opposite, meaning it will track only the live objects and then rest everything is garbage for Java. So this process is a automatic management so that there is no need to explicitly mark the objects to be deleted by the developers in the code. There are two sets of activities on a high level where garbage collection always perform. One is the minor GC and another one is the major GC. Minor GC will happen in the early phase in the younger generation heap and the major GC will happen in the older generation. So whatever the objects uh, got survived in the multiple cycles in the younger generation, those will be eventually moved to older generation and when major GC happens, it will clean up the objects which is no longer referenced in the older generation. So now we have to identify what kind of GC we are using in our production environment. In case if you are using Windows, you can pass the Java and print flags final uh, tag and then you can use the find string and you can use this regular expression use dot star GC which will print out the flags. Similarly, if you are using Linux or Mac, you can use the grep command to filter out the uh, GC flags. So this is one of the sample screenshot of uh, OpenJDK 11 where by default we are using G1 GC. So the Boolean value for the G1 GC is equals to true. Similarly, you can change the GC algorithm and make sure you are using the right version for your application. Then you can validate using uh, print uh, flag final tag. Using the print uh, flags final, we can see what type of GC we are using. But if you want to log the garbage collection uh, events, then you need to send this flag details. In case of Java 8 or prior, you have to use the print GC details flag and X log GC. In case of later version of Java 8, you have to use X log colon GC star colon file and then the path of your GC log. So by passing this, it will create a text file and then it will keep a log of all the GC events. Now let us see a quick tips around GC logging. You can enable the flags for GC logging always in your production and try to collect it at least for 24 hours for your analysis purpose. It will not add any overhead just by enabling these flags. It is negligible. So it is always safer to enable in it your production environment. So this is one of the uh, partial log of GC events. So here we have the full heap dump initiated, which is a major GC. In line number 214, you can see the log information about the heap dump initiated. And then eventually it is uh, progressing, like uh, it is displaying the phase one details, phase two, phase three, phase four. And at the end, it is displaying the uh, how much time it took for the major GC. So line number 230, which is showing the 52 milliseconds it took for the major GC and it reclaimed almost 15 MB. And line number 231, it is displaying the user system and real time. Always look out for the real time so that you can understand where the time being spent. So this is only partial log of GC. When you enable the GC log in production, you will get millions of records. So it's kind of uh, overwhelming when it comes to reading the GC logs. And there are 50 plus GC log formats are available based on the vendor, GC algorithm you are using, and the what arguments you are passing, and the version. Sometimes you may see uh, new lines for each event, or in some settings you may see only one line where it is very tough to interpret the details. That is why we need to use tools like Ycrash or gcec.io so that you will save a lot of time when it comes to interpreting the GC logs. 
Now in this demo, we are going to see how you can capture the GC log for Spring Pet Clinic demo application. So in this folder, I have the Spring Pet Clinic jar file and I have created the launch.bat file. In the launch.bat file, I am passing the Java arguments. One, we are launching the jar file Spring Pet Clinic and I am enabling the GC log using the tag xlog. And here I am passing the name gc underscore the process id underscore and I am going to pass the time. So this will create the log in the current directory. Whenever you start the application, whenever something happens, it will keep a log of all the GC activities. Now I am going to launch my command prompt and then I am going to enter the launch.bat. So this will launch the Spring Pet Clinic in the port 8080. And meanwhile, if you go to your folder wherever you have kept your Spring Pet Clinic, here you can see the GC log. Now let me open this particular log in my favorite editor Notepad++ and then I am going to edit the monitoring. So here as you see it is starting the GC events and then it is keeping it in a, a logging structure. So now let me launch the Pet Clinic. So if you go to your favorite browser and enter localhost colon 8080 this will launch the Pet Clinic. So now I am going to create the uh, heap dump. So in Spring Pet Clinic there is a way you can easily create the uh, heap dump using the actuator slash uh, heap dump and if you hit enter this will uh, trigger the heap dump. Now if you go to your GC log and here you can see the full uh, heap dump initiated line number 207. So now if you want to interpret this particular log file it is really tough because you will get millions of rows of records in your production environment. So in next video we are going to see how you can debug this GC log using Ycrash. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.